Hello everyone, welcome to this special session in a different time so that we can reach everyone in the globe in a live session. Hey Porchetti, how are you doing today? I am good, although it's really <laughs> early in the morning here. <laughs> really? Super, yeah. yeah. For me, it's, it's a suitable time, but I'm glad to be here anyway, because we have a really special guest who is in the other side of the world. He's like 12 hours after me, I guess, or yeah. 13. It, it's always good to keep in mind that the other side of the world from our or your perspective, right? Because we are the other side of the world from his perspective, I'm quite sure. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. <laughs> And uh, today we are going to talk about Cogito and actually we are going to understand what makes it so special for cloud environments. What is different on Cogito from other business automation tools that makes it more suitable for cloud environments? What makes it truly cloud native? I'm but waiting to understand more about it. But before that, I have the first and most important question for Cristiano. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I already for who? I always say that. For we our special know. Ultra guy, he's been a developer for more than 15 years, and he just had his 10 years birthday at Red Hat. So he's, he's, he has been here since forever. So, yeah way before I joined the team. So he knows a lot of the history. He's been on the JBPM team and now he's working on Cogito. So he knows uh, the history of Red Hat business automation. So let me welcome this guy. Nico, welcome. Thanks for accepting <laughs> our invite. It's really great to have you here with us. Thanks guys. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks for uh, uh, allowing people from the other side of the world to join the, the live as well. So it's, it's a pleasure uh, to join you guys. Always a pleasure. But Christian, <laughs> before diving in, I have a very important question to you. Oh the God. last time that we have here, we have Chris saying that we were having an imminent 1.0. Do we have Cogito 1.0 already? Yeah, it's out. It's out there. It's ready for, for oh, people to start cool. using. So yeah, that's, that's a What does that moment. mean? like Cogito 1.0, what can people expect from it? I know we had a live from Chris Verlinen on the on the Key Live 16, and you can find it on our YouTube channel. But just a glance, like, can people already start using processes, decisions, serverless workflow? It's all there already for them? Exactly. So we, we think with 1.0 that this is actually a, a huge milestone for us, for, for Cogito. So we truly believe that now it's ready for people to start using. Of course, there's going to be a lot of enhancements com coming on in the next few releases. So as Chris said, like we release very fast every three weeks. Uh, so, but yeah, like we feel confident that people can start, you know, picking these uh, components from Cogito and start using and start building their, their application. So in fact, you know, what I'm going to present here today, it's, it's try to give a bit of an overview uh, about all of the, the components that you can, you know, choose and pick to, to actually build your cloud native solution, right? Perfect. And uh, about one thing that everybody want to know, especially Amit on the chat. So everybody's actually asking about Cogito GA, and I'm going to tell you. The product team from Red Hat is already taking a look at it and Cogito capabilities are going to be made enterprise through Red Hat PAM. So what is going to happen is that we are going to release Cogito in phases within Red Hat PAM. So the first thing that you're going to be able to actually have the GA version are the tools. So you are go you will be able to use, for example, the VS Code extension, and the product team is already working on the next releases that will include the next releases of PAM that will include Cogito capabilities. So stay tuned for more, okay? And uh, Nico, I know you have a lot to present to us, but for Charlie said he has a question. Have you made the Have you asked the question already? I already did. It was about okay. one point zero. That was okay. more important than one. Just getting started. <laughs> It's too early. <laughs> I had no Red Bull today, so yeah. <laughs> really good. So, Nico, okay. Yep. And uh, uh, for those on the chat, feel free to drop your questions. And, uh, Nico, do you 
rather have us interrupting you as the talk goes through, or would you have uh, rather have the questions at the end? No, sure. Like you, you guys can interrupt at, at any time. Um, we have a lot, a lot to cover. But if people have questions, we can stop and 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 and, and talk about it. That's that's fine. And I can have a break of just me talking alone, so it can have some a bit of interaction as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, so let's we'll go around. <laughs> Good presentation. Thank you. So th thanks everyone. Thanks thanks for for joining. Uh, let me just adjust my screen here. So uh, today, what what I'm going to present to you guys it's um, it's how uh, you can leverage on on Cogito to, to to build your cloud native application, right? So, but for us to 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 start, um, what I what I want to discuss is what's a cloud native application, right? So if you look from the cloud native foundation uh, perspective. So that's that's a cloud native te technologies that empower organizations to build and run scalable applications in modern dynamic environment, such as public, private, and hybrid clouds, containers, service mesh, microservices, and declarative a APIs. Right. So these technologies enable loosely coupled systems that are resilient, manageable, and observable, combined with robust automation. They allow engineers to make high impact changes frequently and predictably with minimal Toy, right. So, from a from an overview, uh, what what does it mean, right? So, um, cloud native uh, applications they are small, they are independent, they are loosely coupled. Uh, we've been we've seen the trend about microservices for for a while already. So, we've been uh, we've seen the the evolution of Docker with uh, you know the container based um, uh, wrapping of the applications. Uh, so we also see that with cloud native, we need to in iterate and deliver business value every time. It's faster and, and faster. Um, we're seeing changes in, in business. You know, everything that's happening in the world right now is forcing business to adapt. Uh, you know, every time you know you need to adapt even faster. Uh, so we've seen the the uh, evolution of the private, public, and hi hybrid cloud. So you need your application to adapt to that, and of course you need your application to be uh, scalable, to be resource efficient. So all of that it's in the context of a cloud native application, right? So that's what we can expect for for uh, when you're looking at, at uh, building new applications. Uh, this is the sh sort of uh, uh, features or, 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 or behaviors you, you'd like to see on a cloud native application. It's where um, you know you can expect Cogito to somehow help you building that, those applications, right? Um, so in this context, uh, to build a solution, uh, you need to combine multiple services, platforms, APIs, and, and much more. Uh, on the other hand, you need to be agile and deliver faster, so it's where you can take advantage of the building blocks from Cogito to create these these native applications. So, if we can see here on the landscape um, of the technology that we have involved with with a solution uh, for for a cloud native solution, uh, we don't really see more of that uh, big monolith. Everything it's it's break down into different services. Uh, different microservices. Uh, we have a different platform these days, which is OpenShift in Kubernetes. That's that's been um, evolving quite fast. So we can see here a, a, a bit of you know what we see as as uh, as a solution when you're doing a cloud native application that we are going to be combining uh, those you know a lot of those microservices maybe with with Cogito, maybe with some of the um, out of the box services that that Cogito provides, right? Um, and all of this, it's 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 nice and and uh, it allows you to be more agile because it breaks down into you know micro components. You can evolve those separately, but it also creates some some challenges, right? So you have much more uh, components to deal with, and and if the business is asking you to to move even faster, uh, you really need to rely on, on on something that allows you to really plug and play. The different pieces together to really focus just on, on a business need, right? So you, you can uh, really afford to lose much time on, on let's say, a lot of the the low level 
uh, things, right? So uh, with, with Cogito then uh, doing a bit of a, a retrospective with the things that we did with 1.0, uh, what, what I can see in terms of a building blocks for Cogito, uh, I can actually tell that the, the main one, the first one is the actual that the runtimes itself. So that's where you're going to be building your applications, right? Um, so that's either a, a Quarkus or a Spring Boot application that you're going to be building. On top of that, uh, we have what we call the, the add-ons, right? So the add-ons are um, um, extra features that you end up adding to, to your runtime that you plug in depending on, on the use case that, that you need. And we're going to talk a, a little bit about those add-ons, which ones are, are, are available, right? Um, then moving to the next one is the services. Those are the, the kind of, uh, let's say, black box services that we have that we provide out of the box that you can use. So a standalone service that you can plug on your environment. And uh, last but not least is the operator, of course, that's, that's the, you know, it's, it's a huge brain behind on, on, on when you go to, to the cloud, when you go to OpenShift or, or Kubernetes, it's going to bring everything together. It's, it's going to uh, attach the services and keep the dependencies between them. So that's, that's a really important uh, piece that we're going to touch um, a little bit today. Uh, the operating itself, it's, it's, it's huge, right? So moving to the to the first part, um, which is the, the runtime itself. So if you if you had a chance to to, to play with Cogito, uh, what what we do with Cogito is actually to take some of the resources. Uh, it's either a BPMN file, a DMN file, or nowadays we have the several workflow with a JSON or or a YAML file that you define a workflow, you define a decision. And based on that, Cogit will then uh, plug in and, and generate the code for you. It will actually generate a full microservice for you. And that's uh, what I'm calling here the automatically REST. So based, based on the service that, that you define or on the resources that you define, when you compile that, uh, Cogit will look into that and, and create those endpoints for you. So there's, there's a bit of a a match, but we'll, we'll go through that um, just so so you know how, how it works. Um, so talking, uh, you know, a little bit more about how this this magic happens is that um, um, with Cogito, and I think this is probably the, the first building block that you're gonna uh, use, right? So uh, Cogito itself, uh, when I when I mentioned that. Um, because you to generate those REST endpoints and, and, and automatically for you to deal with, with processes and, and decisions, um, that's actually done uh, based on the runtime that you, you decide to, to use. And you actually have two, two options here. You have Quarkus and uh, either Quarkus or Spring Boot, two very well established uh, frameworks these, these days. Quarkus more on the on the uh, cloud native, but if you if you already have a lot of experience and, and you're already developing with Spring Boot, uh, you can take advantage of that and plug in Cogito uh, with that. The nice thing um, about it is that um, when Cogito actually generates the code for you, uh, it's not that we're generating a code that's generic that runs on both. We're actually generating code that's um, specifically for the runtime that you're using. So based on the dependencies, based on the, on the project that you're using. So if you're using Quarkus, it will generate the, the REST endpoints, the, the CDI beans or everything it needs, uh, targeting the Quarkus platform. Same same thing for uh, Spring Boot. You generate the, the Spring MVC controller, or the REST controllers that it needs. So the beauty about that is that you, you don't need to um, uh, lose any of the, the previous knowledge that you, you have. Like you can plug in whatever you've been using so far, you can plug in and continue to use. So Kajutu will adapt itself and, and, and try to play nicely with, with the uh, runtime that you're um, um, using, right? Of course, that if you, if you decide to go with, with Quarkus, then there's a few advantages that we see there, that like the, the, the live reload, for instance, is something that we've seen a huge boost on, on developer experience. 
uh, that on development that's that's uh, really uh, game changing these days. And the um, the other thing is, of course, if you are concerned about resource utilization, uh, you can take advantage and use the the Quarkus native um, application as well. So Cogito Build play uh, with that and. Same thing, like any dependency that you're already using with, with Spring Boot or Quarkus, you can take advantage and, and try to plug in uh, together and, and create your uh, solution, right? So uh, let's, let's move on and let's now get, get into the, the add-ons uh, that uh, Cogito provides, right? So um, th these add-ons are really, um, you know, building blocks in, in a way that you can you know, choose and pick the ones that you that are relevant to, to your services, right? So the, the the main idea here is that we keep uh, the service um, very lightweight to just uh, really what what you need. So Cogito um, is not trying to to is not going to try to to push a lot of things. It's really uh, up to you to decide what you need for uh, for your. Um, the solution, the business domain that you're trying to, to deal with, the solution you're trying to create, those add-ons, they are just made in dependencies, right? So you can see on the, the bottom of the, the presentation that um, this, for instance, this add-on here, it's a Cloud Events one, and it's targeting Quarkus, uh, right? So you see that there is, uh, for most of the, the add-ons, we have these uh, two flavors, right? So you either use the Quarkus one or the Spring Boot one. So most of the, the add-ons, they, they, they have support for both uh, these days. Um, the other thing is that um, not only, um, you know, um, you can use uh, the add-ons, but the the fact that you start using a specific add-on will also um, help Koji to, uh, to plug in into the, the code generation, right? So uh, let's say, for instance, this, this one is actually a good example, which is the, the cloud events, right? So if you start using the cloud events, um, it's not only the, the job dependencies that you're bringing in, you're actually giving that hint to the, the, to the Kojito uh, code gen that you actually generate the consumer and the producer that it needs in the specific platform to deal with receiving messages from um, cloud events from whatever broker you're connecting to, right? So let me just um, try to see if I understood, Christiana. So if I, I don't need cloud events, so I don't have this uh, add-on and my application runs lean, slim in there. But if I have any need that I want to emit or, or consume cloud events, but just adding this dependency, it, it will automatically generate code to create all the infrastructure that I need to consume that. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we, you see an example uh, uh, down in the presentation how that actually works. So you, you plug in and then you have, of course, uh, you need to to, to, to define how you're going to use those events, right? So the, the add-on you, you plug in the, in the application, that's, that's the, it's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you uh, along with the code generation. That makes sense. That's great. Thank you. So the, the first, um, the first add-on that I, I want to, to touch on is that base, um, Based on the API that I showed to 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 you uh, earlier, where um, uh, there was like a travels uh, process in there, you, you can see that in there it's very domain specific. Where we are, you know, trying to be as transparent as possible, and not trying to impose any specifics for you about dealing with processes or process instances or any of those details. But in fact, there are situations where you might want to do that. Right. So, for instance, if you want to uh, somehow deal with a process error within your application, uh, what what we provide with Cogito is this uh, add-on that you can uh, put on top of the runtime that allows you to deal with the processes uh, a specific API if you want to. Right. So, in here, just listing some of the, the operations that you could uh, potentially do with that uh, add-on. But uh, in here, it's like a, a full list, uh, or at least what we have right now, about uh, the operations that you get once you plug in this, this add-on, right? Just by the fact that you add that dependency, 
um, then you start uh, being able to, for instance, uh, re-trigger uh, a specific uh, process that's in error or, or you want to uh, skip a node because it fails somehow. So it gives you all of these uh, different, different operations. Awesome. Nico, and we have uh, lots of questions regarding Spring Boot versus Quarkus uh, regarding Cogito. So is there any difference for the Cogito users when they are running Cogito on Spring Boot or Cogito on Quarkus? What do they have in one that they don't have in the other? So the, so the answer for, for that is, is basically the, the features that you get from the framework itself. So as I uh, mentioned before, um, for instance, if you decide to go with Quarkus, you're going to get things like the, the hot reload, the, the native um, compilation so far. But in terms of, uh, of Cogito, we are trying to, 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 be, uh, uh, to keep in parity as much as possible uh, that we we evolve both APIs together. So there is some some low level core that's shared, of course, between both. But uh, as as uh, was mentioned, the, for instance, the add-ons they they evolve separately. Uh, I'll give an example later later on of one uh, add-on that we you know first release we did for that add-on. Uh, it was introduced for Quarkus. Then the next one uh, when it comes, uh, it's for Spring Boot. So we are trying to keep things as much as possible so that in terms of functionality for Cogito itself, uh, we can keep them, them even. Perfect. Thank you, Nico. So, okay, so the next one that, that I want to touch with, so um, so by default, when, when you create a, a Cogito project, the, the state is not persistent, right? Uh, that, that could be fine for, for instance, if you just want a service to, to evaluate decisions or, and give you an output, right? Or have some straight through process, uh, for instance, when you, you're using serverless workflow support. But for uh, some of the use case, uh, you're going to end up having a long running processes where you're going to depend on, on a human interaction or, or an async uh, result from a, um, that, an external system, for instance. So you're going to end up having to persist that state somewhere of the, those process, right? So uh, what, what we, we, we provide now with Cogito in terms of add-ons for persistence is, is, is this three um, flavors, so to say, the like infinite span one, the MongoDB, the file system one and of course if you want to use in memory that's what you get by default so just to 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 give a a, a note here um because when we talked about uh, persistence so we're talking about the persistence of the execution of your process right that's inside your runtime so that persistence it's actually um uh, focus on, on, on the state of the process. And, and what it means is that usually when the, the process is completed, you don't have a need to keep that, that state anymore, at least on, on, on your runtime. So that was um, done in a way that we try to keep it as lightweight as possible. And looking back at the, the kind of requirements that we had for, for, uh, um, for the cloud native application, we, we want to keep those resources uh, limited. So. Uh, so just just for for you to understand that um, you know that persistence itself uh, it's focused on the state of the running process. So if you need to keep the data for longer, then we we look into um, other solutions. In, in, in even in this presentation, I, I have some hints on how you could uh, deal with that. So the so the next one uh, I want to show that's that's uh, probably a very common uh, request these these days with any uh, BPMN solution is that you you want to be able to visualize your process you want to uh, uh, be able to, to look uh, into you know what's the state of my current process right so uh, that's that's beautiful that we have the 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 notion of the BPMN. Uh, the the altering perspective when you're modeling uh, that process, but it's also very useful that you look into the ac actual execution of your process and you're able to see uh, visually where your process is uh, at any given time. So this process SVG add-on, so it, it, it allows you to do uh, two things. The first thing is this one that we're looking at here. This is a, a process 
uh, definition um, that that's the static version of the process. That's that's what you model, right? So then we move to the next part, which is actually uh, the one that gives you a, 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 a visualization for a specific process instance. So what it means is that it highlights, uh, for instance, what we can see here, it highlights that um, you know, those three um, nodes at the start of the process, they were, they were completed already, and this process is actually waiting for the manual visa approval, right? So you can have an instant, feed, instant feedback into looking to where, where a process is um, at any given time. Chris, you said this is an add-on. Is it enabled by default? No. When I use Curge tool? No, so that's that's the thing. That's that's the beauty. The the, the add-ons are not enabled by default, so you you have to, to plug it in. Uh, we might look into to ways of having maybe some recommended setup kind of kind of thing. But at, at this point, we're really um, and much of this talk is to really uh, let people know about everything that's there and that you can choose. But really, we don't want to push anyone to use any of this. You just use if it makes sense for your use case, right? Yeah, thank you. So moving to the next one is the, the Prometheus monitoring, right? So it, it's very, uh, you know, uh, uh, these days with the, the cloud native environment um, that you have tons of microservices running uh, to your environment. So you need to be able to, to somehow monitor what's going on from a more of a DevOps perspective. And with Cogito, you can um, at least turn on some of the metrics uh, that this uh, add-on provide uh, that you can, for instance, see what's, you know, the, the amount of process instances that, that's running, the, the time that's taking for some rules to be executed. So this add-on itself, it's, it's quite um, nice. So it allows not only the, the DevOps in integration side of things, but it it also, um, you can hook into this with Prometheus itself and start building uh, graphs, for instance, like using Grafana uh, on this information as well. So um, we have a few um, uh, metrics that are available there. If people uh, think that somehow they're limited or, or, or somehow just give us some, some feedback, we would love to see what, what people think about this, but it's, it's a really nice one to 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 um, be able to to use. Um, so the next one, um, so this is a, a very very important one, I would say, because um, so the reactive message add-on. So th this one allows that you uh, you start emitting events from uh, any of the, the the runtimes that you create. So. In this case here, what we can see is a, a Cogito Visas runtime that's created. So if you enable that add-on, uh, it will start producing events about everything that's happening in the, in the, let's say, in the Cogito engine, right? So every time a process instance is created, every time a, a process change, it's variable. Every time a, a user task is created or, or modified by the user, there's going to be a, an event that's sent out to, to Kafka, right? So all of that is done using using cloud events, and uh, what I'm showing here that this is actually uh, the enabler for most of the services that we have that plug into the runtime. For instance, like the data index services, the job services, those those are services as I was mentioning, like kind of black box that we provide, and those and those consume these events to to actually react into. Um, everything that's happening into into your Cogito runtime. But not only that, if, if you want to, to explore that even further, as what I uh, put as an example here, if you want to create an audit service or a business monitoring service, so you can start consuming those events and you're going to be listening to everything that's happening uh, within your process or, or tasks. So as just as, as I mentioned, so the reactive messaging one, uh, it, it has these three events um, types so far so that you can listen to. You can find the, the topics that you want to send the message to, and everything is based on, on, on cloud events. 
So it's it's been a well known format now, well adopted, and, and we've been we seem seem to be successful with, with that one. So take a take a look into the documentation on our website to see more like the details, exact details about the payload. But if you're familiar with cloud events, you see that we are we are really uh, trying to to go with um, with that standard. So the the other one. Um, that I want to touch base. It's really uh, coming back to to your question, Porcelli, about um, the the messages, right? So, um, how do you use the the, the cloud events at all? So, what what we we managed to to do with Cogito is that we 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 actually combine um, the feature from from uh, BPM itself, the specification where you have the the message. Uh, events from from BPMN where you can have like a I start message event or an end message event or waiting for a, for for a message. So all of that we we, we actually managed to to integrate that with uh, cloud events. So uh, what we're uh, seeing here on, on this process is that I'm I'm actually waiting for for a cloud event to arrive uh, on this uh, travelers let's say endpoint. To kick off my process, and at the end of the the process, really, what I want to do is to send out an event to to another topic. So, um, yeah, no, no, that's very clear. And um, I just paid um, a question or a comment in in the chat that goes towards what you're just saying. So, EDA event driven architecture is built in out of the box in in this exactly. platform, right? Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So yeah, so 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 combining. So this is the second part. To, so if you enable the the the, the add-on, so here is really where you are gonna tell Cogito how you're gonna use that that event, right? So uh, you can see, for instance, what I mentioned about the topics there, and also uh, you're gonna use the 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 um, data assignment there to to say, look for this event. The payload for this cloud event is actually gonna be. Uh, my traveler uh, domain object that I have running the process, right? So that's, that's what's going to be sent out. Um, so really, the, the, the cloud events add-on with, with the BPMN construct uh, allows us to, to plug those things together. And as I mentioned um, earlier, it, 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 it hints the, the code generation to, to glue together the producer and the consumer, depending on how you're using that, um, those constructs, right? And really, uh, as the question in, in the chat, chat earlier, uh, it's an enabler, enabler for uh, allowing the integration or even driven system, or how you want to call it, or even if you want to use Cogito to, to orchestrate some of the services with events that you already have on, on your um, system, right? So in here, just you know, just just as an example about you know something that you could do that you end up sending out uh, getting Cogito to, to orchestrate your services. You, you, you start a process that sends out the events to, to do uh, something like the, the booking hotel, flight, and car, and then you wait for for those events to arrive back. So it's really uh, for those events itself, they they are just waiting for a message to arrive. They're not. Interconnected to 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 Cogito in any way if you're following the payload to expect right so but uh, the beauty about this is then you know moving forward you can use Cogito to bring some flexibility to your process and adapt in, into different ways right so if you want to do something like um, a saga pattern where you wanted to for instance can, uh, cancel something because one of the services. Um, you know, fail for some reason. You can actually roll back all of that with you know sending other uh, other messages, right? Yeah, and event driven architectures are in hype today. So this is pretty good to know that we can actually take advantage of this in business automation projects. But uh, I, I would like just to clarify something. So I could either either have uh, ev um, events emitted for Kafka with or without the cloud event specification. Yeah, we're, we're adopting cloud events. So we, we started as, um, you know, not making it monitor, but we've seen that the cloud events, they have been, um, you know, the usage for that, it's been just uh, 
picking up, right? So we are trying to push, you know, the, the cloud events is pr probably going to be the, the standard anyway, but we don't, uh, that's, that's really uh, what I would say would be like the out of the box experience you're going to get with Cogito. It's really to use those, those cloud events, but we don't want to also uh, disregard any, anyone that's using a different payload, right? So you're going to be able to, to reuse the same um, stack to, to, for instance, consume events from different formats, or, or do different uh, things. If you're, I don't know, using Avro or something like that to, to you know, to uh, you know, deserialize your your, um, your message. But the thing is that 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 will will be possible, but it might not be so straightforward as as you have with the cloud events, right? Okay, I get it. And just plugging in and being a little bit in advance, um, Cristiano just mentioned the Saga pattern. We'll have a key, the last key session, key live session of the year will be exactly about Saga pattern using Cogito. So it'll be uh, a whole session just we explore understanding exactly what you just mentioned, Christian, how this orchestration using the, the, the engines and how we can compensate and now these things with the, the, the mechanism we have in place. That's going to be awesome as well. Yeah, that's, that's, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned for that one. <laughs> so then moving, moving on to the next one. So, um, so a, a, as you guys notice, like with the abstraction that we created for the cloud events, uh, we're basically doing the same thing with K native, right? So, with Knative, um, we are, you can also combine with uh, the the message uh, constructs from from BPMN, but really instead of you know you pushing uh, sorry not you the the Cogito runtime is pushing a message out to Kafka, we pretty much you know open up a, 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 an HTTP port and wait for the Knative broker to send uh, a post into Cogito, or we send out a post HTTP post into the the Knative broker right so so this is one of the the, the examples that make it, it really um, you know uh, you know you can leverage on on that to, to create your uh, cloud native you know, application as a uh, we are talking since the, the start of the presentation right so it's it makes it really easy to for you to plug in and start using those features from from K native by simply switching the the, the, the add-on, right? So in this example here, I'm just showing how um, uh, Cogito would receive uh, an event uh, through an HTTP POST request, and in here it would be just sending out those those events through uh, an HTTP POST request, which is the the um, the way that Knave uh, handles the the eventing, right? So that's it for the um, for the add-ons. It's it's a list. It's not a full list. So there's uh, a few other ones that I might be able to, to, to do a bit of investigation. But so moving forward into the the, the part of the services now, right? So the, uh, the services, as I mentioned in the, in the beginning, those are more of the the uh, black box applications that we provide as part of the uh, that you can deploy on, on your uh, environment, right? So. Um, and we tried to solve a few specific um, um, challenges with that that, that will uh, make um, your experience with the, the development of the, the, the cloud native application a lot, a lot easier, right? So, uh, for instance, so when we, when we talked about the, the, the microservices, uh, what we, we are going to start seeing is it's a lot of the uh, different services, right? So you're gonna have start having a lot of uh, smaller and, and to a greater number of, of services that are gonna scale up and down into um, different uh, levels, right? But um, the, the the issue with that is that to, to at some point we you need to 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 be able to understand what's what's going on, what's happening from the, let's say from an overview perspective, you know, you want to be able to 
to see where your processes are um, independently from from the runtime itself. So but somehow you need some something, some component that aggregates that that data and is able to to provide you an API or a way to consume that without having to manually go to each of those uh, individual services, right? And the the answer that we have for that is really the, this data index uh, service. So this one is actually the, the what we recommend for people using uh, as opposed to keeping the the, the, the the state persistence of the, the processes, right? So that's what I was mentioning at the beginning with the, the runtimes. So instead of, uh, of using that, you, you kind of, you offload that responsibility to, to a component that um, it's only responsible for aggregating the data from, from multiple uh, components. And, and data, data will be there for, for as long as, as you need and you configure it to be there, right? So, um, the, but there are a few other things that, that the data index can actually do uh, for, for you. So we, we really uh, focus um, with the data index to not only uh, you to, to be able to, to query the data based on, on let's say, on the technical domain, like the, the process instance or the user task, but we also want to allow people to, to go there and be able to find the data based on their domain, right? So usually when you're, when you're uh, dealing with a process, um, you know, you, you don't really know that the, the process instance ID that you're dealing with. You usually what what you know is the order number or the person name that that you to we need to somehow uh, help with complete you know their, their shopping cart or, or something like that if the, the process is stuck that stuck that at some point. So uh, with the data index, we, we, we think that we we managed to to. To give some uh, at least some help in that and creating an API uh, that's exposed via uh, GraphQL that can um, be quite nice to, to deal with to, to help solve it, that problem. So in here I'm just just giving a, an example about the, the UI. This this UI is, is just for really just for development. The, the data index service itself doesn't have a a UI, you can just pretty much uh, plug in into the GraphQL endpoint. But uh, the main main thing that you want to see here is that I'm actually uh, querying for travels where the, the traveler first name equals Cristiano, right? And, and I define all the attributes that I want to, to, to get from that travel. So this is what I was mentioning that uh, Cogito allows you to, to find that data based on, on the actual uh, domain that you're concerned about. It's not you're not searching here for the process variable with, with a name uh, equals Cristiano. You're really looking from uh, the perspective of the domain that, that you expose. And, and that domain, it's really uh, comes down from, comes back from how you model your process, the variables that you use in, in the process. But with the data index, uh, we kind of allow you to have uh, two views of the same data. So you can use, for instance, this, this travels um, type here to, to get the database on the domain. But if you're looking from the process instance perspective, which is another um, uh, construct that's there by default, you can also find the same process instance. So you can correlate uh, and use that to, to whoever best fits your, your use case, right? So just just to give a bit of an overview about the, the architecture, about uh, how it works. So really, the the, the data index is, it relies on the on the reactive messaging add-on um, that I, I mentioned uh, earlier on. So that that you have those runtimes that you create, like this Cogito visas or the Cogito travel agents. Those will be a publishing out or a meeting events uh, on a cloud event format. That the data index will be consuming and storing those uh, either using InfiniSpan or, or MongoDB persistence, right? So and that's pretty much what it does, and then and then it exposes this GraphQL uh, interface for you to query. So it's in a way it's 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 a sort sort of lightweight co component that helps you uh, with uh, you know giving having an overview of having a, a best. Um, visualization on, on, on your data or, or on your processes as they go through and, and you know different 
uh, serves come up and down and you keep track of that uh, all stored in the, to the data index. So moving on to the next uh, to the next challenge. So um, so what what we have here and that's uh, that's really um, uh, uh, some uh, some some of the goodies I would say from from the BPMN uh, 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 notation, right? So you can uh, play with with timers and, and you can react based on, on future things. Like for instance, this this example here that I'm showing on this process. You, you have uh, an order here that you expect someone to complete that order uh, within an hour, right? So if you don't, uh, then you need to, to do something. You need to send a notification, you need to send an email, you need to try to contact that person. So you are trying to be uh, upfront into any situation that your or, or your business could, could uh, face, right? So um, another example is that if you want to have like a, you know, a reporting to some extent that you want to start a process instance every, every month or, or into a given time frame. So with, with these um, um, timers um, constructs that we have from, from the BPMA, what happens is that the Cogito runtime itself, um, it, does, it does, very, does have like a basic support for uh, for dealing with timers um, itself, but it's it's not persistent as well. So uh, what we created to 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 help with that and and, and not add more to to a Cogito service is that we we created a specific service that deals only with with the timers, right? So uh, it knows how to scale properly uh, to to give a. a a post back to your runtime whenever it's time for a given uh, um, action to be executed. So um, if I show on, a, on the architecture visualization here, and uh, hopefully it, it explains a little, a little bit better, but uh, so for instance, with the Cogito videos, videos, whenever you reach a point on, on your process that you need a timer or something to be executed on a later time in point, the the Cogito runtime will contact the job service uh, and tell him, look, here is is a task that needs to be executed um, within one hour, right? So the Cogito service then it's completely responsible for for making sure that um, that information is stored, it, it scales, and then and once it's it's time to execute it knows how to get back to that runtime and, and, and tell the runtime look now it's time for the process to to move on so i, I go back there and i trigger that um that specific point in in the process so it allows to 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 move forward so and then the just one other end here to this architecture is that Similar to the, the run times, the, the job service itself also emit events for us to track those, uh, the state of those events through the data index. And that's done also via the, the cloud events format we use in uh, Kafka, right? And I, I have a question, Cristiano. That capability about job service that I just mentioned. Think about my, my if, for any reason, I I need a, a scheduling service. Can I just use that without BPMN? Yeah. So we at this point, I would say it's 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 um, it's a bit a bit tied to the data specification, but we do intend to expand its capabilities to allow that other things can can be plugged in. So that um, dealing with, with uh, uh, timer service, job service, is, is, it's a co common problem, right? So we, we will have uh, scheduling issues for other parts of Cogito itself or, or the platform. So we, that makes sense for us to, to kind of try to expand a little bit further uh, into something that's a bit more generic that we can uh, leverage on, right? Cool, thank you. So the, so the next sort of um, issue that, that we have is that um, while well, we, we, we have all the, the Cogito runtimes, we have the data uh, stored into the data index, we have the jobs uh, running into the job services, and we have all of these runtimes, but 
then how how can I uh, have you know have management capabilities on top of that? So if something is going wrong, uh, you know how does the the the, the process owner or the person responsible for the, for the process can somehow look into that and and have a tool that allows the person to easily fix that process, you know, change a variable or skip that um, node that's failing or trying to re-execute the node that, you know, let's say a system was, was down. So our answer to, to that is then the, the management console. So the, the management console, it's, it's an application, it's, it's a Quarkus application that uh, it allows you to, to view all the process instances. You can check the process details. You can uh, go there and abort the process instance. You can view the timeline about what happened. Uh, we, we've been focusing a lot on, on allowing easy operation like book uh, operations. So if, if you have an issue happening to many processes, we try to, to make it as simple as possible for you to, to fix uh, not only one process instance, but uh, as, as many as, as you need. So the capabilities there, they, they started to, to, to expand to the other sets, like the, the jobs uh, management, right? So you can go in there and start looking at the, the processes, uh, sorry, not the process, but the jobs that were uh, scheduled on your system. So if you have 10,000, you know, jobs that are there somehow, you, you want to, to cancel that, you, you need to, uh, you know, do some some management on top of that. You can leverage on the, on the management console. Although those those operations, they they're all uh, also available via REST endpoints. Um, it, it's such a, a common use case that we, we need some 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 operational side of things to help the, the the process to 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 finish right. So we need someone um, overseeing the execution of the process to make sure it it completes fines. Um, so I mentioned the jobs management. The other the other point there, the last uh, bullet point there is the domain explorer. That's that's something quite uh, interesting. So it, it plugs into into that idea that I was mentioning about the uh, data index, where you can actually query by travels or, or whatever domain you created. Uh, so the domain explorer allows you to to go that and search by the the actual domain that you, that you created and that and those UIs they are creating they are created dynamically and, and based on your domain. I believe uh, uh, the next one uh, I'll have a screenshot on the next one, but uh, in here is just um, a bit of an overview about uh, how the, the process management console uh, looks like. And uh, you can see the details of, of the process there and the process variables, and it allows you to, to do uh, a few things there. Um, just just as a uh, as a hint, so we we seen the the, the process SVG the, the the diagram into an uh, earlier add-on, and we are working to include that uh, into here uh, quite soon. So you can expect the, the management console in a, in a future release to also include the visualization of the process. Um, in here, so that, that's a really nice um, feature that we're working on. So, and then as I mentioned, um, the domain exploded. Um, so, what you see here is not a list of processes; it's a list of uh, domain attributes that you play with uh, from from your domain, right? So, it's really just using the the attributes that um, that were created as part of of your domain so and there's nothing really that that um, needs to be uh, done uh, to to really extend this it's all plugging into the graphql uh, schema that was generated and it's available on the uh, data index side right from uh from an architecture point of view um the management console uh really um relies into as i mentioned into the data index service uh to to to, to grab all the data it needs to show all the process instances the, the job service and, and all of that goes back to the data index but anytime you need uh, an operation to be executed so for instance if you need to somehow um you know um, re-trigger a, a specific node because an, another system was down 
the management console will know how to get back to to a specific runtime and execute that operation using the 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 management add-on capabilities of the REST endpoints uh, that are available on your runtime, right? So moving on to the next um, to the next challenge is it's it's a very common use case in, into BPMN is that you have um, uh, people uh, interacting with the process. You have user centric. Uh, workflows where you need someone to approve something, you need someone to, to do uh, a specific task or review something. So it's very common uh, use case to, to, to somehow allow uh, a person or a group of, of people to interact with your process, right? So somehow uh, for Cogito, we, we need to, to, to have an experience that uh, at, at least get you started with with dealing with those, um, ideally we, you can build your own, but uh, at, at least you know uh, from our side, I think it's quite important to to, to be able to to generate uh, to, or to have a solution for that for you to not have to, to create our own uh, all the time. And the the answer for that is it's really the, the task console, the the this service that we, we created. So it it provides this task uh, out of the box. Um, task inbox uh, experience, right? And it does have some some forms that are generated based on the JSON schema uh, format uh, where you're plugging with a different uh, frameworks to at least uh, give you a starting um, experience to, to play with some of the tasks. So this is something that we recently introduced with uh, Cogito 1.0. Um, so that component was, was released for the first time as a uh, as an image, um, so there's a, a lot more coming on, on on this one as well. So, for instance, here um, another thing that you're going to see, apart from the user being able to to log in and see their own tasks, we want to also allow the, the users to go there. And if, for instance, if you're a manager, uh, you have to delegate some tasks because someone went on a PTO or something. Uh, that's the sort of capabilities we want to start uh, adding on top. So. Anything that's related to, 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 to tasks or you know, human tasks in specific, that's where this task console component uh, comes in. So here is just a just a, a screen a quick screenshot that shows uh, the list uh, of tasks for a, for a given user, right? So it's, it's very simple at the moment. As I said, we, we are starting to 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 enhance these components even further. And in terms of um, architecture, it's pretty much the same as the management console. It relies on, on the data index service to, to capture all of the data uh, and, and, and bring to the user only the tasks that are visible to, to him, right? So that's that's the only the other concern that we have when we're dealing with uh, human tasks. So I think I mentioned on the earlier um, slide is that we provide the integration with key clock for instance for the SSO part so we want to, to make sure that uh, when you use a user-centric uh, solution uh, that user in particular he only is able to see the tasks that are assigned to him or, or his group right so we don't leak any any other information there so similar thing where we're uh, dealing with uh, with the management console so we can Grab the, the list of tasks from the data index, uh, filtered, uh, of course. But then when, when, when the user comes to interact with the task, when he's going to go and complete his task, we are going to go, the, the, the task console is going to go back and hit an endpoint into each of the specific runtimes that knows it's responsible for that um, specific task. So last but not least, I just want to, to, to touch base. So there's a, a set of um, services regarding trusty AI, uh, which are more concerned with, with decisions and how you can trace uh, and get an explanation about what a decision was done. So, so this is an amazing work. And, and I, I'm bef better than me explaining here, there, there's a really good presentation up from, from Danielle. Uh, I believe in on a few um, key lives um, ago. I just recommend you guys to to have a look on that because um, 
uh, it, it can go a lot deeper into uh, what those services are and how to, to use those. But I think it's important just to, to mention here that those are another set of services that are uh, available into, into Cogito as well. So, so for all of these services that um, that I mentioned, so uh, the distribution for the services, uh, you know, as as we saw in the in the very first slides, so we, we want to target the the cloud environment, and we're providing the the container image for all of these by default. They, they are available on Quay.io, and you can use that. I'm gonna have. Uh, links for those uh, at a resource page at, at the end, uh, if you want to check those out. But just just for a, for a, you know as kind of um, a hint here. So apart from from those um, from those uh, containing images. So if you like to play with the the plain jars, so all of these services they are uh, they are playing Quarkus application. So we're using our own. Uh, frameworks here to, to, to you know to, to leverage the, the capabilities provided by, by Quark. So all of these are standalone running jars that you can just grab and run if, if you wish uh, to play on a local environment or, or, or you know so that's that's just just my my uh, hint here on how can you use all of these these services right but um Mm, so, so just going to the last point from from the from the building blocks from from Cogito. So, uh, as I mentioned, the operator it's really just this amazing piece of software that that combines all of the services and add-ons that we, we have been just talking about. So that the the operator itself will will be it's capable of managing the dependencies across the service or even building. Uh, those runtimes for you, if you're, for instance, if you're using uh, OpenShift, right? So it, it also makes sure that, for instance, um, the infrastructure that you're using, uh, for instance, that uh, if you're using uh, Infinite Span or MongoDB uh, to connect to um, the operator itself, you set up the service for you. So uh, all of these. Um, Services that we, we we talked about today, the, it's, there's a lot of no, I wouldn't say magic, but it's it's almost like that that the operator does to to kind of combine and put all of the infrastructure that you need when using the operator. Um, it can also make sure that, for instance, that that you when you have a dependency across uh, the different uh, services, that those dependencies will are ensured to to be there for. Uh, as long as it needs, right? So the the operator itself is it's it's a huge um, subject. So I'm just really um, touching just just the surface here because I think it's where uh, really uh, we get all of these um, these blocks, these building blocks that we're talking about today uh, uh, combined together, right? Um, and then just to give a bit of an overview. Uh, on how it would look uh, for the from the operator perspective when you're using the Cogito on on, on OpenShift. So, for instance, the, the 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 operator from Cogito it makes sure that you you have all the the runtimes um, as custom resources as shown in the image there and the services that you define uh, for it to use, like for instance the data index. So, but then uh, it, it ensures that you have a connection. It's going to set up the connection for you with the uh, with the other services. But for instance, if you are going to use uh, Kafka or if Infinite Span, you kind of need to, to go and make sure that you use the specific operator from from those services as well. And those are going to provide you the the experience that you want for the that specific. Platform. So, for instance, here the, the Infinite Span itself provides their, their operator uh, for provisioning the, the database, right? So, once you have that in place, then you can uh, plug in the, the, the Cogito one that you make sure that it connects all the, all the pieces together to, to use that, that database. And yeah, and just as maybe a last point here, just just wanted to, to mention, like um, as on the start of the presentation, 
uh, we, we talked about the 1.0, the, the milestone uh, we, we just achieved. And, and just to, for you guys to, to know that uh, Kojutu, it's, it's moving. So all of this, um, you know, the things that I, I listed here, they're not a static version. Uh, not at all. So there's more things coming up. So, for instance, for the add-ons and the services, uh, there are some some really good things that we are we're being playing with, and it would be really nice to, to have some some feedback. If there is more uh, that people would like to see in Cogito that would make um, you know uh, e would make it easier to to create any uh, cloud native application, because just to to remember the beauty of the community that once we build this. Uh, it becomes available for, for everyone to use and, and we can uh, build on top of that. So um, with that, um, I'd like to conclude my, my presentation and if you guys have any questions or... Actually, there's one here about performance, actually. Like, do you think Cogito runtimes would be able to handle a use case uh, for example, for stock text, which is a very high frequency event emitting uh, use case. Uh, that, that's that's a good question. I, I would say uh, for Cogito itself, the 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 what we've been playing with uh, so far for this use case, I have, you know I haven't really seen. A limitation so far. This, this, uh, for instance, we've been playing with with Quarkus now, which is just takes things to, to a completely different level in terms of uh, of performance. So, to, to be honest, that's something we need to to test and, and check. That's a use case. To to be fair, I haven't um, played a, a lot, but I think it's if there is a need, you know, we we can definitely take a look to see what uh, what's in there. Yeah, totally. And uh, Alex, I think we could use some 10 minutes for Chris just to show us a little bit of all these interesting components. What do you think? If Nikolai is available too, of course. Uh, well, uh, it's up to him. I, I am up to that to see a quick running demo. That would be great. So let me try to share my screen here. And by the way, thanks for the presentation. And why are you sharing your screen? Uh, I'll make this presentation available, okay, on our Ripple. I'll share the link on the chat. And uh, here you go. Let's see, what do you have in there, Nico? Yeah, so so really, you know, I have a, an example here, and we, we have been using that example for quite a while now. So uh, this is the, the travel agents uh, example. So in here you can see this is the Swagger uh, UI. From the service, and you can see like the, all the the different um, uh, endpoints that get generated based on the add-on. So that this one has actually quite a few uh, add-ons that are enabled. So you can see that the metrics, the SVG, uh, the management endpoint, right? So uh, just to give an example here, so if this is the actual okay. So just a minute. Uh, we have a service deployed with Quarkus, and this Quarkus application has these processes. This is where you are showing these endpoints, and this Quarkus application has all the extensions enabled in the pom.xml, correct? Exactly. Good, exactly. okay. Yeah, exactly. And then just to, to showcase the one that I, I mentioned, for instance, for the, for the SVG one, so that's where you get the, the static version of the process, and then uh, you know, if I go in here, I can uh, I can see that this particular process instance is actually finished now from from the version I, I checked earlier. So you can see it's all highlighted with the different steps uh, that it took. I like this. Like people could just embed the running the the current status of their application in their own front end if they want. Exactly. So this, this is this is an endpoint that's available inside the, the the application itself. So you can do whatever you want with with this, right? So you don't need any extra capabilities, uh, you know, apart from from the add-on to to be able to use this. So it's it's quite it's quite nice. Mm -hmm. The so with how can I search this if yeah, I so need to? Because it's stored in a, uh, I see Mongo or Infinispan. So how do I search this? Yeah. So so then let's let's go back to 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 the data index, right? So this is the 
the the UI for, for the data and, and that's uh, in here you can see all of the the um, the types that were created for for this particular use case. So the travels one it's one microservice and the visa application it's it's another one. So let me just go in here. Okay, so we have two runtimes running and exactly. the data index is grabbing the data from both. Exactly. So it's combining okay. the process data that from from both, right? So uh, with with here, for instance, I can I can go and 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 use that that um, API that I mentioned uh, to to grab the information about the travels, right? So that's what I was saying that you can use that domain specific. API to, 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 to get the data. So for instance, you can get the hotel data here, uh, let's say the, the name, if there is one assigned, and you can see that's the, the perfect hotel. So, but then the, the metadata of this domain um, specific uh, endpoint uh, allows you to also look into the, the process instance or the user test that, that are um, assigned to this process. That's what I was saying about the two views that you can get from, from the same domain, right? From the same yeah, path. that is a really uh, frequently asked question because people who are used to dealing with this type of querying, like by process instances, by user tasks, uh, sometimes they want to do a, a software migration and just go like, Remain using this old style API instead of going to the domain specific API in yeah. the first shot. So it's good to, to have both options. Yeah, so it, it really brings the, the flexibility to use either way, depending on your use case, right? So so if, if you don't list this metadata uh, information here, you, there's nothing about Cogito here that uh, you're dealing with. It's really just the the domain data for, for your use case, right? So, but then if, if we go into, um, for instance, let's say process instance here, I can actually come in there and see that the same uh, instances, so let me just maybe try, let's see if I have the, just just the experience here. here. So, so the filters uh, are also um, static here. It's, so if I want to just say um, ID equal, let me see if I grab that number. So yeah, so I can, so I just filtered by that same process instance and I got all of the details regarding the ID and when I started and the nodes that were executed by that uh, specific process instance. So uh, again, so this is a completely different view on the same exact, exact same data, right? In the monitoring console. Sure. So let's jump into the, the management console. So in here, I just uh, refresh. So that those are the you know by default, I can see that the, the processes that are, that are active uh, on this management console. So just clicking here, I'll, I'll have a, a full detail about this instance, right? So um, and then what we have here is full control of the, the variables if we need to to change and also. Uh, the timeline for everything that happens within this, this process, all the nodes that were executed. Uh, being able to, to trigger a node, as, a, as I mentioned, like if there is some action that you need to take to fix the process to, to some extent, uh, some, some reason, or, or really seeing any of the related sub-process. So, so this um, allows you to, to get that uh, bit of an overview about the, uh, about the specific process instances, right? And this is pretty good. I really like it. And we have the Domain Explorer and Management Console that you made, that you also explained, right? Exactly. Okay. So, so this UI here, it's really building on, on top of that API that I showed for, for the GraphQL. So in here, because we, as I mentioned, we, we are talking about, we deploy two services, two Cogito runtimes, and we are aggregating that data into the data index. Uh, the management console then it's it's now able to see that those domains are there and, and you can actually go and create a you know get an out of the box UI that lists uh, that domain data. So for instance, if I go here and I, I would like to select some of the details about uh, let's say in this case I'm just seeing the flight details, but let's bring the the hotel or maybe the traveler uh, nationality or something. So all all of these are just really 
dynamic data uh, based on, on that um, API for GraphQL that's constructed. But the, the beauty about this is that it then, uh, based on, on this domain data, I can actually see that this domain data is related to three process instances. So the same way that we, we do search the data on, on the data index in two ways, uh, one looking from the process instance perspective and the other one looking for the domain perspective, on the management console, you can do the same thing. You can look from the process instance or you can look from the domain explorer perspective and then find the actual process instance that you need to, to interact with or, or uh, fix or whatever action that needs to be taken for that specific instance. Wow, I like it, I like it. Finally, and uh, only if you have it running, do you have it r right there running the test key box? No, I don't. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> last one. Last question. Too much. It's way too much. There's a lot going there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope. I hope. Uh, you know. I think it's it's good if people want to to come back to to the presentation. I know it's it's been like a dump of information, but I really feel that uh, now that we achieved one dot zero, there's there's a lot of potential that people can use from from Cogito to build their their applications, and they, we really need to communicate that. To, to everyone to start using and giving us feedback. So if people, you know, uh, really want to, to start playing with it, we'd really be uh, grateful to start having feedback for, for these uh, features, right? Yeah, and, and I, uh, adding to that, Christian, I think it, our group, our own group, will start to build more examples, right? More content out there. So we will try to communicate better all these features and uh, take advantage of all this functionality as you presented for an hour just the feature oh, that's a lot to cover so over the time we'll build all material and, and examples and things that take advantage of all these capabilities take advantage of, um, and all the consoles and all these things yeah yeah that's really like a really touch the surface of each of these features right so we really like we can go a lot deeper with each individual of these ones so yeah it's really just I hope that I uh, managed to give a, a good overview so people uh, know how to, to get started and, and go from there and start using those those components and, and, and give us some 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 feedback and, and things that you, you think that could be improved. Or if you want to create your own add-on and share with the community, that would be great too. That's awesome. Really good. Thank you, Nico. So. Uh, I will share the link here on the chat right now for you uh, to see everywhere you can find the community of Cogito. So feel free to, to jump into the site, the site and check the best way for you to contribute back. But just share, if you follow, even if you find a bug and you report it, it's already a way of contributing, okay? You don't need, you don't need to send a pull request. Just by re like sending uh, suggestions, by sending uh, the the issues, that's already a great form of contribution for us. So, with this, Alex, any final words? No, it's uh, thank you very much, Cristiano. As great content out there, will take some time to all of us process this information. That's a lot mm -hmm. to cover, and uh, thank you again. Thanks, thank guys. Thanks, for, thanks for having me. Sure. Have a great day, Chris. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you for being here with us today. We hope to see you on the next week. And then on the other one, we'll talk about Saga. And then we'll have a small break. But we can talk about this on the next session, right, Porcelli? Absolutely, yes. And in and, and the same time, we are preparing our great content for you here. And keep sending us suggestions in the comments and uh, giving contact with us in the communities because we also, one part, uh, important part of these sessions is to get involved in the community, to get you contributing and asking questions and get in contact with people that are using and building the, the key community uh, software. So that's great. Thank you. Yes, excellent. So thank you and see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.